Since the beginning, there's been one mystery long unanswered in the world of Minecraft. One set of game design decisions so creepy, so d disturbing, that they feel like they come from a completely different game. It's a riddle that, once solved, exposes more of the hidden lore that's buried deep inside this world. Today we're covering the mystery of the broken discs 11 and 13. <laughs> Hello internet, welcome to Game Theory. Can you dig it? So last Minecraft episode, we started an epic quest. Well, everyone else gets to play around with their giant meatballs and deadly skyboxes. Here we are doing the important work, solving the hidden lore that's buried inside this game. Because it is there. I started to prove that last time, and it is just waiting to be unlocked by us. I asked all of you to send me your theories, and you did. The response was overwhelming, with hundreds of new theories posted in the comments, as well as over on the Game Theorist subreddit. Everything from the origins of the pigmen to the literally burning questions of the nether. Keep them coming, guys. In full transparency, I'm still reading through them, and I'm working on compiling all the information to see where we go to next. But today, I actually wanted to tackle a Minecraft mystery that always bugged me personally, and one that I didn't see many theorists actually talking about when I made the call for theories. Today, I want to talk about the music. Discs. For those of you who don't know, music discs are unique items found randomly in chests that can be played in jukeboxes to, you know, liven up what's otherwise a very quiet, serene game. No, not that. The music discs are something to really set the mood. Uh, wrong move, guys. Perfect. These discs can also be dropped by creepers when they're killed by arrows shot from either a skeleton or a stray. It's an odd spawn mechanic, but alright, we'll just go with it. Let that beat drop, creeper! Literally, creeper, let it drop. You don't even have hands, how can you be holding this thing in the first place? Other than that though, there's really no other way to obtain them. They can't be crafted after all. Now all of that isn't particularly interesting, right? But where this goes from just being another item to a full-on gaming creepypasta is right here. Disc 11 and 13. You see, most music discs in the game have fairly innocuous names and music, like Blocks, Mall, and Cat. One of the first two music discs ever added into the game. But along with Cat, there was one other, simply titled 13. And unlike all the other ambient chill-out music, this one was, well, was unsettling. Outside of it not having a name and also being numbered after what many consider to be an unlucky or evil number, so much so that airplanes and hotels don't even have 13th rows and floors. Fun fact, check it out next time you're in a hotel or an airplane. 13 also cuts off abruptly right in the middle of the track. And when it comes back, we're suddenly hit with echoey otherworldly noises, leading many people to assume that this was a record left by the alien-like Enderman. But then the mystery got even deeper. When version 1.0.0 came out, nine more music tracks were added to the game, with yet another disc going unnamed. This time, it was disc 11. And where number 13 was mildly unsettling, 11 outright screams to us that we're not in the overworld anymore, friends, starting right off the bat with desperate running, heavy breathing, and coughing. And here all along, I thought that Minecraft was for kids. Can you imagine finding this as a child playing this game, putting it on the jukebox, being excited to hear what you just found, and then what? You suffer from PTSD because of what you hear. Actually, I probably don't even have to ask you to imagine this sort of thing. I'm sure many of you watching probably had that exact same experience when you were playing the game as a kid. Bring in the cuboidal nightmares. I fear no man, but that thing. It scares me. Adding to the mystery, Eleven is broken, shattered to pieces. These two discs led many people to conclude one of two things. Either they were documenting someone who was attacked by Endermen, or they were of someone being chased around by Herobrine, the ghostly glitch that many say haunted the game's code in the early days of mining and crafting. But 
That's largely where the discussion of these things stopped. Guesses. To my knowledge, no one has truly taken a scientific look at analyzing these two discs to try and uncover the mysteries that they contain. So today, I am doing exactly that. Using a combination of audio analysis, visualization tools, metagame analysis, and just good old logic to try and end the childhood nightmare that was these two discs. And in the process, I'm hoping that what we find continues to unravel the mysteries of the deeper lore hidden within this game's files. Now, before we get into any deep analysis of the audio itself, I want to start by actually analyzing these soundtracks visually. As many of you may remember from my video on the Fortnite Season 5 ARG, it's relatively easy to hide clues within audio files, but sometimes those clues aren't necessarily ones you're gonna hear. Oftentimes, they're ones that you're gonna see. They're called spectrograms, visual representations of the frequencies that you're hearing in a sound file. It's a technique that we've actually used a lot when creating clues for our Game Theorist ARG. Weird sounding audio files like this. That, when changed into a visual format, give you everything from web addresses to secret passwords like this. Wait, what? what is this? What's this code? I wonder where that could lead to. Yeah, yeah, that's it. 7v7. No way. No way! I can't believe it! New back-to-school game theory merch? Wow! This stuff looks perfect for any mining or crafting adventure. Forget diamond armor. The only thing I want to be wearing around is this heavy-duty theorist backpack. Perfect for storing school books, laptops, or cubes of dirt. Or a pickaxe, <laughs> apparently, since I told Chris to buy some props for the shoot, and he instead purchased real pickaxes, as opposed to, you know, Minecrafty toy ones. And that's not all. We've got ourselves a hard shell pencil case perfect for keeping your favorite art supplies sharp, organized, and intact. Take my emeralds, please! And speaking of pens and pencils, there's a brand new hardcover journal where you can start putting them to use. Drawing your own fan art, crafting your own theories, heck, it even comes complete with notes and illustrations from past game theory and film theory episodes, including Bendy and the Ink Machine and Harry Potter. It's all available right now by Diggy digging a hole in the top line of the description. You don't need a safety torch to find that one. Go now, since unlike in Minecraft where everything's unlimited, here we have a limited supply, and once they're gone, we can't craft anymore. Now, where was I? Oh yeah, discs 11 and 13. Discs 11 and 13, while they are certainly creepy sound files, they're not filled with the types of sounds that would make me immediately think to put them through a spectrogram. However, there was one finding that I wanted to put to the test for today's theory, because I was kind of skeptical about the results that they had. A French Minecrafter named B. Sidro supposedly made a spectrogram of the sound files and said that he found both a creeper face and the numbers 12418 hidden inside. It sounded like a lot of fake news to me, and the screenshots that were circulating circulating the internet just felt a bit too perfect, a bit too photoshoppy feeling for me, so I redid the whole spectrograph test using my own tools, and this is what I found. It was 100% true. This wasn't just a bunch of karma fodder, something cool that someone made up to try and get people's upvotes, the images are actually there, hidden within the sound file. But then what? does it mean? Well, interestingly enough, the numbers appear to be a secret signature inserted in there by the music's producer. Minecraft's music was produced by a man named Daniel Rosenfeld, better known online as C418. And wouldn't you know it, but the numbers 1, 2, 12 in hexadecimal code or hex code translates to the letter C. Thus we have 12418 actually being a code for C418, his online name. The creeper face, meanwhile, well, it's a creeper face. Maybe these tracks are less made by the Enderman and more a product of our little Bombs. To know for sure, though, we have to keep digging. To continue being good little AV club members here, we're gonna need the A to go along with the V that we just analyzed, hopefully giving us a clear picture of what exactly is going on. So let's play this thing, starting where it all began, disc 13. Here's a copyright neutral clip. Okay, so obviously this takes place in a cave. We have sounds that are echoing, reverberating, with wet dripping sounds and chimes. But we don't just have to speculate about this. What we're hearing in disc 13 are very clearly cave ambient sounds. The ones specifically programmed into the game to play when you're in a dark, eerie, underground place. Here's a moment from disc 13. And here's one of the matching cave ambience tracks. 
But it goes even further. Nowadays in Minecraft, there are 19 different cave ambience tracks. But back when Disc 13 was first introduced, guess how many there were? 13. 13 isn't just a spooky number here, it's a reference to the number of cave ambient sounds that existed in the game. But what else are we hearing here? Well, at 143, there's the faint sound of a creeper hiss and explosion echoing through the cave. Here's the clip. And here's that iconic sound as we usually hear it in the game. It's immediately followed by the sound of someone falling into water and then staggering out. You can almost hear their footsteps. What it seems to suggest is a caver exploring a cave, running into a creeper, and then having to jump into a pool of water to avoid the ensuing explosion. He gets out, slightly injured, and then tries to find a place to hide. But there are two other audio clues here that are worth mentioning. The first happens at the one minute mark. You can actually hear faint sounds of arrows being shot. Here's the audio. And here's the sound effect in game. But while we hear two arrows being shot, we actually only hear one of them land in the ground. The other one remains silent, which suggests that it hit its target. Now, what mob is found in caves and also happens to fire arrows? Skeletons. Now, remember something that I mentioned before. The music discs are found either in chests or via a very random mechanic of a skeleton stray arrow going on and killing a creeper. And what do we have in disc 13? In this one audio disc, we have a creeper exploding and a mob firing arrows at us. The reason creepers drop music discs when hit by skeletons or stray arrows, it's a reference to disc 13. The last thing worth noting here is the cutoff that I mentioned earlier. The disc stops abruptly after the arrows fire and picks up as the creeper starts hissing. It's a cutoff that's not only unsettling, but one that, wouldn't you know it, also happens at exactly 1 minute and 30 seconds into the track. 1-3. Disc 13. <laughs> oh yeah. And wouldn't you know it, but the creeper starts to hiss exactly 13 seconds after that cutoff. Slow clap, Daniel. Slow clap. You use that number 13 to its fullest here. So those are all fun little Easter eggs, but why is it cut off? What are we missing? Well, for that, let's turn to disc 11, which is, quite honestly, a bit more straightforward. Somebody is running on stone, uses some metallic object that clicks, then uses a paper object based on the rustling we hear before finally running away, first on stone and then either on dirt or gravel. Throughout the audio, though, we have a disturbing addition. Coughing and heavy breathing. Human coughing. Sounds that feel very out of place in our perfect little block world. And then it just cuts off. No words, no music, no explanation. Just cuts off at the 1 minute and 11 mark. Um... 1 minute and 11 seconds, you don't get a second slow clap. But seriously, it's no wonder these things became a creepypasta in their own right. To throw something like this into a game that has a massive audience of 9 year olds, and suddenly this becomes a complete horror show. Even as an adult, this feels like it belongs more in my creepy film theory episodes than in the realm of Diamond Minecart and Captain Sparkles. But okay, let's start working on identifying some of those mysterious sounds. It turns out that the easiest way to narrow down what we're actually hearing isn't audio analysis, it's game analysis. We know the metallic clicking has to be flint and steel by process of elimination. Disc 11 was officially added as a music disc on July 30th, 2010. Other metallic objects were actually added later, like the compass, which was introduced later that year in September, whereas flint and steel has been present in the game before it even had a numbering system. The same is true for the paper object. It can't be a map, since maps didn't appear in the game until much later, April 27th, 2011, a full year after the disc was introduced meaning that our caver would have to be using either paper or a book of some form. So he lights himself a fire and presumably starts writing on the paper or book, almost as if he's keeping a journal. And wouldn't you know it, but throughout Minecraft's extended lore, we have ourselves multiple instances of historians who document their findings in this world via journal of some sort. My last episode on Enderman, for instance, talked a lot about the Mob Bestiary, which was one such book written from the perspective of an explorer in this world. And more recently, in July of 
2019, we got ourselves Minecraft The Lost Journals, a novel which literally has ripped torn pages from an explorer named Nicholas who finds and gets trapped in locations like the Nether. Perhaps this person that we're hearing in the audio files is Nicholas. There's no really solid evidence to that, but it could very well be. Or perhaps any of the authors of any of the journals that exist in the Minecraft Extended Universe. We can't quite be sure who it is. But we can be sure that these two discs connect with each other. They're telling the same story. Despite there being less reverb in disc 11, we know that it's also taking place in a cave based on the types of blocks our adventurer is running on. Dungeons contain cobble and mossy cobble. Strongholds didn't exist back then, and we're not hearing ourselves any grass, only stone and dirt. Meaning that probability says it's most likely a cave. Could it be the same cave that we heard back in disc 13? Well, when you look at the events, it seems to continue the story that was set up in disc 13. Disc 11 slots in perfectly at the break point that we hear in disc 13. Our cave explorer gets attacked by arrows from a skeleton at the beginning of 13. The audio breaks, but when we pick up back in disc 11, we hear him running away, presumably escaping the arrows to a safe area where he can light a fire and record the findings in his journal. However, he's caught off guard by a creeper. A creeper that causes him to get up and run away, and as we hear back when disc 13 picks back up again, explodes, resulting in him jumping into water at the last minute to avoid the explosion. We end our little vignette here with him trying to find some place to hide and dry off. Heck, perhaps that's even why disc 11 is shattered in the first place. It broke during the explosion with the creeper, or during our caver's fall. And that, my fellow miners and crafters, seems to be the story of disc 11 and 13. A story of creepers and skeletons, and why music discs spawn that way. A story of journalists who are lost underground in caves. A story of broken records and hidden visual easter eggs. But what's most interesting of it all is that it confirms a part of my last theory. The belief that there was an ancient civilization of builders present here in these games before we arrived. People who came before us. No, these discs weren't created by Endermen, but perhaps more unsettling, they were made by men men. Humans who aren't here any longer. A race of people who tried to explore, document, and understand the mysteries of this world, but didn't survive long enough to pass their knowledge on to us. Their journals are lost, their records are broken, their structures are left empty. Sure, discs 11 and 13 might not be as creepy as we once believed them to be when we were younger playing this game, but they allude to something much more dire, an existential dread. This cave explorer is gone, without a trace. His people are gone vanished into thin air, and now we're here, alone, and putting together the lost pieces of this civilization. Could the same thing that happened to them happen to us? But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. New merch.